we are going to be building a an awesome greenhouse um, and I don't think it's gonna be like a conventional greenhouse I know it's not going to be and I've kind of been looking online and I haven't uh, really uh, seen any other designs quite like it the structure is gonna be a little bigger than first intended uh, huge Look, 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 man. I'm trying to, we're trying to shoot a video. So what are your thoughts on the um, size of the greenhouse? It's large. The design, what about the design that I sent you in the email? What do you think? Oh yeah, it's like 50 foot long by 70 foot wide. It's Google SketchUp. I made a two scale. There's not a lot of planning going into this. It's kind of like build your greenhouse as you go. And we're going to incorporate a cold sink and a rocket stove in it. And we're going to have cob bottle walls, and we're going to have benches and picnic tables and a sauna. Right in here we'll have a beam, um, maybe 10 foot, and then it'll return back to the, like a half wall. Got it. And from here on down, we'll have uh, whatever our, our pitch is going to be, I'm not quite sure. So we'll come down about 12 Mm -hmm. Maybe 16, depending on if I want to do that, or 14. Another post. Another beam. Another line another of post, posts. All the way down, yeah, which will be 24 feet. And then another 12 foot span. Got it. Down somewhere, you know, and maybe in here, half wall. And then, like, we'll dig out, like, a cold sink or something, put a stove where I'm digging in the bottom. All right, so what you want to do is put the water inside of the soil instead of just getting it surface wet, you know? Uh -huh. And you wanna see what, cause what happens with clay, it's, it's, the, it's the platelets that are uh, the, on a molecular level, they're like cupped like this. And that's what makes it stick together with water. And so there, there's just little tricks that you can see if it's got clay. I mean, you can tell if you've worked with pottery that there's clay content, but you're never gonna have a soil that has solid clay. It's not going to be all so clay. That's why we call clay soil when we work with this stuff. You know, we say, let's get a, a load of clay soil because there's going to be some soil. There's going to be some silt. There's all kinds of stuff that's in all the soils, you know, but you want to just know that for building with cob, if it has enough clay so that it, you can have it stick together. And really the best way to do it is to take your, your soil, make a block out of it and let it dry and you'll see if it works. But Right now, on the field test, we're just gonna see if it sticks together, how sticky this feels. You kinda, um, well, a rudimentary one is you get enough so, uh, you know, moisture in there, and you do this 10 times. If that thing sticks, you know, this is just kind of a, like I say, a little field test. But this kinda gives you an idea. The one I like the best, actually, is you take it and you make a pencil-sized um, snake. This is, and you, you, you actually have to do this more than once because I think you, you know, you get used to different soils of what it, what it can do. But the idea is that you, you, you wrap it, see how I'm getting a crack there? Now that's kind of saying there's more silt, and I think there is more silt in this, this particular thing than um, up there at the hill. It was way more sticky. So it actually performed a little bit better up there. Mm -hmm. But so I'm gonna force it to do what I want it to do. Because if it's super high silt, you can't even get it to do what, you, what I'm gonna sh try to show you here. Because I think there is a, a lot of clay here, and I know this would work for cop. I'll vouch. The other one looked really nice. <laughs> I, know, I know it works. Yeah. And then you 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 actually um, put a ring around your finger. What you what you don't want are cracks like that. But it, for the most part, it's performing. It's actually going all the way around without all the cracks. So, you know, th that just indicates that you know it's a little siltier but I can pretty much get it to go around my finger without it cracking. And again, this is a field test, it's within reason. And I mean, look, you could just feel the stickiness of this stuff. You kind of want it to be sticky. So look at that, it goes all the way around for the most part without cracks. That's what you're looking for. And it's rudimentary. What's really gonna help is when, you know, this is the first like step to see if you should actually make the uh, test bricks. So then you'd make your test bricks and you'll find that this is gonna be good. And then you would just put some sand with this because you can't have it, um, you can't have it all clay soil. 
what you need is aggregate. Even concrete has aggregate. So you have a binder, which is your clay, and then you have the aggregate, which is the rocks or the geologic material, sand. And then we put straw in there too, and that kind of uh, holds things together to tensile strength. So if you compare it to, to uh, concrete, it's got um, rebar, that's its tensile strength. The, 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 the rocks are its aggregate, and then the cement is its, um, the binder. So that's okay. what we kind of know, you know, but we're just duplicating. Actually, I think concrete is duplicating what this is because this came first. This is, you know, this is Adobe. Yeah, that's pretty much it. But I think so, you got some really great soil. Awesome. Here. Have you ever built a bottle wall? Yeah, we've put, yeah, sure. Put. So do you just, you just have your design with the bottles? Is there any certain, I guess, uh, spacing requirements between the bottles or is there anything special you have to question. do in between and around the bottles? Here's the best way to do it. Build your wall. Forget the bottles. Because it's hard to design it as you go. I mean, people will do this, and I've done it. So you build with like dimensional lumber and build your wall? No, sorry. Back up. Okay. Build your cob wall. Okay. Like we built the, uh, uh, the cob houses that we do. And then what we do is you have now, now you have a canvas. And then, you know, hopefully you get your level of the floor wherever you want. And you can put anything you want. So before it dries completely, you just carve out with a, a, a machete. Just carve it out, put the bottles in. But now you have a canvas and you can actually kind of space things out and you can put it where you want. If you're trying to build up at the same time and you got help and people are going up at different lengths and it's like put a bottle there, put a bottle here, you have almost no control of your artistic kind of canvas, right? But if you kind of build up and it's all somewhat wet, now you have a scope of the whole kind of picture and you can, you know, you can really have control over what your art piece is. Okay. So I would recommend doing it that way. And do you put lumber in the wall then? Is there any requirements as far as, do you have to put any lumber? or just, if, if it's all bearing on beams, it doesn't even matter. You can just build the whole thing out of cob. Well, there's load-bearing cob, and okay. that, will take, that will take the load of your roof structure. When we're saying load-bearing, it actually has the load of the roof, right? Or okay. the yeah. load of something above it. And if you don't have a load-bearing cob, you have, the load is on posts, on wood kind of what you're talking about for your greenhouse. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to have wood at all. We, are, we make complete buildings, there's no wood for the load bearing. It's all cob, complete 100% cob. It does matter on context. What I would say here for this, this, this context, rainy, it's Washington, Oregon, you want a pretty good overhang. Okay. Yeah. And then the foundation, we can build this on the ground or we need to put some stones in first? Get it off the ground? It, yeah, for cob, you want to have it up off the ground. Um, a rubble trench is a really good idea, especially because you've got this uh, water table. It's pretty close. Okay. So you definitely want the rubble trench. And the rubble trench is really just a Frank Lloyd Wright invention, and it's pretty brilliant. But it, it has, I mean, you can look it up. It's pretty standard, um, you know, literature out there. But we use it almost exclusively because you can put pebbles. You put inch and a half, inch and a quarter rock in a trench dig a trench first, put the rock in, and that trench will daylight. That will, the bottom of the trench will, will, will go at an angle and it will go out somewhere. And you fill up the trench with rocks, pebbles. Then you put your couple of bricks or whatever you want to put. We usually use reused, uh, re recycled uh, concrete. Okay. But people put earth bags and, you know, your tires you talked about for uh, earth ships. Yeah. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Once you get your rubble trench done, now that's drainage. So whatever you put on that is not going to wick up water. Right on. So then you put your cob on top of that. You don't want to put cob right on the ground. Yeah, it's a bad idea. Right, bad, bad, bad. Erosion. Yeah. Okay. I mean, other than that, it's pretty much just do it. Yeah. Because you'll figure it out as you go. As far as like a mixture of what it takes to make it bind to itself and... Yeah, well, that's what your test bricks this. is. Okay. What your test bricks are going to do is you want to put in... What you start out mostly is just put a, um, one measure of the soil and one measure of the sand. Okay. Mix that together with water, put in your straw, and see what that brick looks like for you. Okay. And then if you, you want to test it to failure, so you put now the next brick will be twice as much sand. And you go, oh, okay, this is just feeling too crumbly. Well, then you've, you've found your balance. Or you only do one to one and you realize it needs to be more sticky. Well, then you need to put more clay in. So do two clay, you know, do fail the other way too. It will be, if it's too sticky and too much clay, it will crack. And if it's too much sand, it will fall apart. 
Okay. So you kind of want to balance. I see. You put, you know, they say, yeah, it's generally, it's a lot of sand. You just want the, the aggregate to, to be stuck together enough with the, the binder. I'm not falling down, I'm just catching up with my shadow. It's been quite a while since we've had a decent conversation. There's like a 12 right there, and then there's a, there's a 14 behind it right there. So I was thinking about rolling this on and cutting it, and rolling this on and cutting it. Well, you want to keep those as beams, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, they're, they're nice. That's a real nice log right there. needed a place to go and by golly there it was. This whole shelf system started because of this piece and this piece. It was given to me by a friend and he says you need to just do something with it. And I didn't know what to do until Jillian said I need a shelf. <laughs> hey, there we go. So. That's pretty awesome. Tell me what the honey hut was supposed to uh, be originally or what? Oh it still is. All my honey bee keeping stuff is upstairs. Okay. And then if we're going to ever have a harvest we're gonna do all of our spinning in here <laughs> and the honey's all upstairs yeah all the boxes are upstairs yeah and the door open the door up again real quick what's that you have like a here i gotta see this you i have, faced yeah. it yeah you have a counterweight thing here going on so here i gotta my splitting i'll just let it go there and it'll go down on its own further than break over it stays open. Doug fur natural edge down. Piles and piles and piles and piles and piles. Now I'm down to pile. One pile. Pretty nice. Working through it. It all went into the house? Yep. Come on in, you'll see it. These are maple rounds that I was given. They're chainsaw cut, they're dry, they're burled throughout. They're tabletops. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. So I need to make a truckload out of that, take them to Portland, have them processed to flat, and then sand them and finish them in their tabletops. This guy here, with the natural edge around it, and some maple. <clears throat> and like, uh, I think this piece here is the one that I gotta make my brackets to go underneath the mantle board. Stuff that you see stood up was the last pile that was outside. I went ahead and rough planed it to take the crud off and take some of the tonnage out. And I had it in here just to dry the rainwater off. Now I can flat stack it, but it's flooring, mostly alder. There's the pickets for the wraparound porch. Oh! There's 300 of them just for the wraparound porch. <laughs> so the last step on these is I got to find a way to properly router this curve and this curve to get them all consistent because the flats are good. I'm, I'm putting in a different species of wood flooring in every room. So here's my black walnut pile. This is going to be flooring for one room. I've got maple, I've got alder, I've got wide plank dug fir, I've got uh, white oak, I've got red oak, I've got, get this, myrtle wood. I'm going to have a myrtle wood floor. Wow. i got the pile over there for myrtle wood some of my planks for one of my wide plank floor. Oh wow. See that guy? On these? Those are all flooring planks. And what I'll do is I'll screw and plug on the planks and then I'll tongue it and groove it and I'll have like 20 inch wide stock and then a 3 inch wide and an 8 inch piece and a 12 inch piece and I'll, I mean the widths are going to be variable. Mop board, baseboard trim, that kind of thing. So I'll use all of that. This scale for the exterior came from cedar stumps. So what you do is you cut a big chunk about yay wide. You take your hatchet, you whack off the sapwood on one edge. You run it through a jointer to put a straight edge on it. You take it to your table saw, you cut it to various widths, eight inches, six inches, whatever you want. If there's a split there, you'd cut the split out. If there's a knot here, you'd cut the, on each side of the knot, get rid of the knot, so you end up with clear. Wow. 
And now this one has something going on on the back, so I'd probably cut a little pattern out of that and get rid of that. Yeah. So it's pretty much a dead clear shingle. Uh -huh. So this is the pile that we never used. Seventeen yeah. plus. <clears throat> if you want a beam that exceeds all manufacturer's recommendations for your greenhouse, <clears throat> careful the beard. <laughs> Did it ever flip out though, and like hit you in the nose? Not yet. Still just as ugly as I ever was. It scared me. Looks like he's done this a few times. Something, maybe it's just 